The Full Melt Show is intended for a mature audience. It contains adult themes, adult content, and sometimes adult language. Listener discretion is advised. It's The Full Melt Show. Are you high? Hi, are you high. Talking about? The Full Melt Show. The Full Melt Show. A marijuana discussion about news, culture, politics, and lifestyle. Fullmelt.com. Toll free. 844-420-TALK. 844-420-TALK. Here we go. I just did a Matthew McConaughey thing, didn't I? I had no idea I was even ready to uh, move into the realm of Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> um, have you ever heard, uh, incidentally, you ever hear uh, somebody tell the story of uh, Matthew McConaughey and the all right, all right, all right story? Um. He actually did it. He actually revealed the story behind All Right, All Right, All Right on uh, Saturday Night Live. And I never wanted to know the story behind All Right, All Right, All Right. I knew it was his, you know, little thing that he said. It was like, you know, his trademark, his calling card, as it were. And I never really wondered where it came from. But after I heard the story, I'm glad somebody told me. <laughs> so here's where we're at. Um, it is a Friday. Friday, the 8th of December, I'm sorry, January of 2016, and I am excited because there's so much going on. I'm always excited. I mean, you kind of really can't get me out of the realm of excitement. Well, I suppose a, a, a nice a nice connoisseur de-waxed wax may accomplish that feat. I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not going to lie about it. I do need a cigarette. Okay, I'll revise that. I want a cigarette. Um, speaking of which, my friend Gersh Avery here says, it's been 72 hours, and so far, no cigarettes for Gersh. You know, Gersh is a heavy smoker like I am. So that's really uh, a feat to behold. However... Getting past that 72 hours can sometimes be, I don't know, a repeated exercise in hell is what it is. Because somebody will get past that 72 hours and then, I don't know, they'll go out and have a drink with some friends or um, they'll smoke a big bowl that'll just make them want to go reach for their pack of smokes afterwards. Because the after cigarette or at the after doobie cigarette is definitely... Uh, one of the calling cards for me for smoking. Like, I could have smoked a cigarette and put it out and directly lit a, a joint, and then when I finished the joint, whenever, whatever that was, whether I was sharing it or by myself, when I finished the joint, want to move right back to another cigarette. I mean, I could be like, oh, I'm glad I'm putting this one out. Before I lit the joint, smoke the joint, and then immediately back to another, another cigarette. So for Gersh to make it for 72 hours, hey, congratulations, um, if nothing else, that deserves some one-man one man applause here for Gersh. The problem is is that I've done that 72-hour thing more than uh, half a dozen times um, in a full-out effort to just cold turkey quit smoking. And I was successful for at least that far, and then at some point got drugged back in. You know, th that drinking uh, with, with a couple of friends at night, having a, having a little after-dinner cocktail or you know, tossing back a couple at the bar after work or so, that will definitely make you knock on the door to want to smoke. So smoking bad, okay? Definitely. Um, at least tobacco smoking is bad. I'll refine that as well. So um, did you see El Chapo? El Chapo Guzman uh, has been recaptured. That's the big news of the day. Hey, we got El Chapo again. Anybody remember the Rocky and Bullwinkle days? Rocky the squirrel and Bullwinkle the moose. <laughs> Nothing up a sleeve. Watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat again. <laughs> That's how I feel about El Chapo. Oh, wait a minute. You're, 
we got we got El Chapo. Did we? Is everybody sure about that? Oh, he got away again. We had him, but then he got away while we got him. I mean, we were putting him in the car after we got him, and then he got away. He he went out the other door, and we couldn't find him. He he was he, he's like Houdini. Let's see if we can hear the uh, report about El Chapo from ABC News uh, today. Oh, this is just an actual video of, of them arresting him. It's all in Spanish, so I don't even know why I'm playing it because there's no audio value here. Um, it's just somebody's cell phone video of Guzman with a white sheet over his head. It looks like a towel. And that's it. The following contains images not appropriate for all ages. What? Okay, here's the El Chapo report from BBC. I hope it's a report. See, no, it's just believed to be 58 years old, born in a small rural town in Sinaloa, Mexico, began selling marijuana at a young age. Leader of the Sinaloa cartel and known for the most powerful drug dealer in the world, consists consistently ranked on Forbes' list of global billionaires. El Chapo means shorty and comes from Guzman's relatively short statute. Founder of the Sinaloa cartel in the mid-80s, Guzman co-founds the Sinaloa cartel, orchestrates a deal with Colombia drug lords, becomes the dominant player in the region. Believed to be responsible for 25% of all illegal drugs entering the United States. From 1989 to 93, declares war on the uh, another cartel. 1993 becomes Mexico's most wanted after a cardinal is killed in a cartel shooting at Guadalajara Airport. 93, Gos Guzman flees to Guatemala where he's captured, extradited to Mexico, sentenced to 20 years in prison. That was in 93. January of 2001, escapes from maximum security. Uh, for 13 years, Guzman eludes capture, uh, hiding allegedly in Sierra Madre. In 2013, Chicago crime commissioners named Guzman public enemy number one for his influence on the criminal network there. Uh, February 2014, after days, uh, day, I'm sorry, days, days after Guzman uses tunnels to escape from uh, arrest at his ex-wife's house, they, they uh, capture him again with a second prison escape. 30 feet tunnel underground equipped with artificial lighting and 2016 Mexican president says El Chapo, El Chapo has been captured. I mean, that's, that's the, uh, I thought ABC was going to do, why did I have to do all that? Why did I have to do all that? I mean, it could have been somebody from ABC News doing all that. Well, I suppose technically I worked for ABC News. What's this? Oh, God. That's the other big story is the, uh, the Philadelphia cop. Um, that's shot several times by a guy pledging allegiance to ISIS. Oh, when is it going to end? Mine's cigarette went out. Well, here we go. I mean, honestly, this has been probably one of the shortest weeks for marijuana news that I've seen in some time, at least with regards to uh, the Googleplex. Is there a Googleplex? I think there is. Um, where are we at here? I'm looking for the stupid... Oh, I better check the email first. It's always in the email. Marijuana News. It's, it's not changed much since yesterday. These are the top six. See, usually there's ten. You know, it's, you know there's no Google News when <clears throat> the alert comes and there's only six <clears throat> of what is usually ten. Uh, marijuana plan backed by billionaire Sean Parker on the path to the California ballot. That's according to The Guardian. Again, there's nothing new in that story. This is just somebody having to do something about marijuana for a story. So they dug this one up from the file and just kind of repeated it. Nothing really new has happened there. Uh, school committee to vote on medical marijuana policy. This is, again, another rehash story for several days now. I think this has been rehashed since Monday in Auburn, Maine, talking about, oh, uh, you know, we got medical marijuana and the kids got the marijuana thing and now I get, they're in the school and how do we get it to them? They're all trifling over that. New York opened its, opens its first medical marijuana clinics. Uh, again, a rehash story. This has been going on for a while now. Oh, today they actually opened. I don't even know if it was today. Um, it, was, uh, it was yesterday. Schools, mall medical marijuana policies over student use. This is again back in Maine. So there's two of the top six stories of the same story. So it's really the top five, isn't it? Uh, the top uh, story uh, for today from Google, according to Google, uh, Vermont's governor wants to legalize marijuana. Here's how he would do it. 
The only worth, uh, it's probably the only story worth cracking open besides maybe uh, the one towards the bottom there. Uh, the marijuana, well, um, yeah, the marijuana policy uh, plan that's being backed by billionaire Sean Parker in California. So let's see. I think we want to experiment with that in the reverse order. So we'll, we'll do, we'll talk about, do we have time here? We'll get a little time. Um, let's talk about, shall we, this um, marijuana plan backed by billionaire Sean Parker on path to California ballot. This is in The Guardian. Um, the reason I want to do this story first is because California has the larger history of uh, cannabis legislation. And they also have the nation's longest you know, statewide cannabis law, being the first medical marijuana excuse me, law in uh, 1996. Um, the reason I want to talk about this is because, uh, first off, it's nice to see that, because California is the one that's, that's uh, failed to get this. You know, if you thought about this logically, right, you'd be thinking that um, the first state that would do legal marijuana for just a, adult use, responsible adult use, would be California, right? I mean, since they were the first one back in 96 to bring the medical marijuana law to, to fruition and, you know, gave other states opportunity and pause to craft legislation of their own and get it done, and they have. Um, you'd think the first states, and they tried, they would have been the first states if they got it done, that would actually get retail cannabis done for adults 21 and over, would be California. But I think there's a great lesson to be learned here to all the states that are trying to do this, at least from a citizen's initiative, a petition drive. And I'm sorry, I've got a terrible cold. My voice is horrible. My diction is terrible. My, uh, I can't hear out of my ears. It's horrible. Um, so bear with me. I apologize for that. Um, I think it's interesting to see what Vermont wants to do about legalizing cannabis after having examined perhaps the final version of policy on this issue in California that was done first, right? I mean, um, it just seems logical, I suppose. And so we'll do that in that order. When we come back from the break, we'll talk about what's going on with Sean Parker and the Silicon Valley plan to legalize marijuana in California and how that compares and contrasts with the first attempt being done by the state of Vermont. Hmm. You're getting the full melt. When you need legal help, you don't want to guess at who's standing next to you in court. And when it comes to a medical marijuana defense, it's even smarter to partner with a lawyer before you need one. Based in Royal Oak, David Rudoy has a proven history of not being afraid to take your case all the way to the Supreme Court and win. Find the law offices of Rudoy Law at RudoyLaw.com. RudoyLaw.com is a quick reference on your rights concerning Michigan medical marijuana and up-to-date news. That's R-U-D-O-I Law.com. Call 248-935-9074 now and talk about your legal needs because at RudoyLaw.com, we don't just stand up for you, we stand up with you. What's up with these things, Victor? We decided to give ourselves stickers for each feature we release. We read about 10,000 suggestions a week to create features that, as traders, we'd want to use. 10,000 suggestions? Who reads all of those? He does. For all the confidence you need, TD Ameritrade, it's you've got this. green for the sweet leaf in Flint, because now getting safe access to medical cannabis patients in Flint, Michigan, is never more welcoming. Presenting the sweet leaf, a brand new patient experience bringing 12 carefully selected caregivers housed in nine separate offices to distinctly assist you with their knowledge and reputation for excellent patient care. Classes and training coming soon in the large community room. Check it out in person. 400 South Door Highway or call 810-259-2571. The Sweet Leaf Center in Flint. 810-259-2571. All right, all right. I got to stop it right there. I got to stop the automation in progress because I already see some ter some terrible flaw that's just going to make the rest of the show crappy. So I got to go back and fix it. Hang on while I do this live. Do, 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 do. We gotta undo that. And undo that. And uh, perhaps undo that. Yep. Maybe one more. No, we'll let it go. All right, let's see if that let's see if that solves it. That might be enough. 
Go back to where we were. Back from whence we came. Oh, it's still not enough. Hang on. All right, we'll fix it this way. One more then. Come on now. Come on now. That's the one I needed. Okay. Here we go. Oh, it looks a lot better now. Just telling you, it looks a lot better. And so what we'll do is we'll pick up from whence we left off, which I think, if I'm not mistaken, this might be the same. Well, we'll, just, we'll let it play again. Here we go. Got something to hide? Canalock offers discreet and effective storage solutions that destroy odor. So nobody knows. Canalock is a patented charcoal activated bag that discreetly stores your marijuana. Canalock is made from the same material as military chemical warfare suits. Get yours at canalock.com. Visit canalock.com to learn more about no smell technology. Introducing Sacred Elements, a place for natural and alternative healing for the mind, body, and soul. Sacred Elements. It's one place, all solutions. Registered, licensed, certified, ordained. Sacred Elements. Massage, hypnosis, Reiki. Sacred Elements. Raindrop, aroma and color therapy, body detox, ministry, life coaching, weight and nutrition counseling. Sacred Elements. Next to the Sweet Leaf, 400 South Door Highway, Flint. 11 to 7 daily, closed Sunday. Call 810-259-2570. It's the Full Melt. Radio show. Radio show. All right, all right. All righty, all righty. All right, all right. Yeah, something had to happen there. That was the only way I was going to get fixed is to do it live. It would have just been a nightmare out of the rest of the show. It would have moved your audio around terribly. Um, you're listening to Steve Green. This is, I think it's a cheapened version of the Full Melt Show today. I don't know why I feel it's cheapened. It's probably because there's not that much going on. I mean, normally Friday's a heavy news day. But because, um, I know, it's the end of the week. People like to get their stories in before the weekend comes. I don't know, it seems to always be, uh, maybe it's because, the you know, you got Saturday and Sunday there, and they're like, well, you know, this is going to happen on Saturday, and this other thing's going to happen maybe on Sunday. Or maybe we're looking forward to something that's happening on Monday, so they post it on Friday. So it's, it's always a heavy cannabis news day. We got Jack Squat. So um, uh, the Full Melt Show airs here Monday through Friday from 7 until 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And is live. The program is live. You can call uh, 844-420-TALK if you want to engage this guest Please engage the guest. It's it's like I want you to feed the bears. Can you can you please feed the bears? Bring a big lunch and feed the bears. In this case, uh, call the show and hope I can hear you because this cold is killing me. Like I don't know. I've never had my hearing reduced this much by a cold. My ears are ringing. Can't hear a darn thing. Nobody's knocking. That's me. Um. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's driving me insane. But uh, we left the uh, program uh, going into commercial break with um, this idea about, uh, and now I'm in the wrong place in here, sorry. The story is um, marijuana plan backed by billionaire Sean Parker on the path to the California ballot. Let's examine this in a little more detail, shall we? The plan, which is backed by Silicon Valley billionaire Sean Parker to legalize recreational use of marijuana in California, is on the path to the November ballot, potentially bringing more than $1 billion a year in tax revenue, according to legislative analysts. Uh, the proposal, which would bring um, for the retail sale of marijuana to adults aged 21 and older, is one of the most highly anticipated initiatives in no small part because California is the country's largest economy and the eighth largest in the world. You grasp on that now? I mean, I know it's a nice little chunk of land out there and there's a lot of people that live out there. But you understand the gravity of that? It's, it's the largest segment of our economy here in the United States. And if California were its old, own country, that region would be the eighth the eighth. Uh, largest economy in the world if California were its own country. Can you imagine that? Oh, man. Here we go. <clears throat> you see about the chain smoking? It's just got to stop. 
And it's, it makes no sense anyways, because while I'm, you know, talking about this story, uh, the th- stupid thing is going to go out again anyways. Um, some in- industry insiders are unhappy with the proposal. Um, now, remember, this, the guy that's backing this proposal is uh, Parker, Sean Parker, the founder of Napster, and uh, Justin Hartfield, the founder of Weed Maps, and are withholding support. Wait, wait a minute. They're withholding the support on these bills? The skews towards big marijuana, said uh, Hezekiah Allen. He's the executive director of the California Growers Association. It's an industry trade and lobbying group. Oh, they see the lobbyists got involved. You know big business is coming swarming when the lobby, they bust out the lobbyists. Right? No small-time business guy's got a lobbyist. The state's attorney general cleared the Adult Use of Marijuana Act, or AUMA, on Wednesday, allowing the campaign for uh, the measure to begin. The first hurdle will be to gather 365,880 signatures to qualify for this year's general election. It's an effort that will start in a handful of days, according to spokesman Jason Kinney. Signature gathering could cost as much as $2 million a year, with the overall campaign reaching $10 million. That, according to industry sources. Uh, Campaign organizers have formed a political action committee called Californians to Control, Regulate, and Tax Adult Use of Marijuana While Protecting Children, which it says it has collected $1.25 million, including from Parker Hartfield Drug Policy Action, uh, the PAC of the Drug Policy Alliance, and the uh, Marijuana Policy Project of California. So that's a lot of dough being muddled together from many different philanthropic sources, right? Because I don't think these people have any vested biz, excuse me, business interest in um, in spending money on this. These these people are all people that want to change policy, not necessarily create big business. So, uh, with that in mind, and this this is again what makes this looking at California more interesting, because this is a um, it's what I would call a social juggernaut I mean there's this marbled exterior of all these different thoughts from so many people it's like a tie-dye shirt when it comes to policy and people that want to um, have a say in what this means and what it doesn't and so there have been various and sundry forms like some colors on the tie-dye shirt who've already tried their method of getting this done and failed and the problem is, is because it's not a single colored shirt, right? It's like maybe four or five, six colors. Each of them representing, if I'm just using a tie-dye shirt as an analogy, each of those colors representing a different segment of the community. Some colors more prevalent than others. Some colors less. So you got bigger groups and smaller groups. And some of these guys, like I said, have already tried their their own thing on their own and failed at it. And and the reason is because they did it on their own. Remember, right, they need 365,880 signatures to get this done in the state of California just to get it on the ballot. And then you got to have at least 51% voted in. And, and And up until now, the big problem, and this happened in a couple of other places, Washington and Oregon went through their own internations of the same exact issue. Um, is, the, is, is the splintering of the community. Now people have, since the industry began, their own little piece of the pie to protect. So if, let's say I'm a dispensary owner. And remember, there's, no, there's nothing in the law in California that outlines the existence of dispensaries. This was a reaction by the people to the language of the law that said, okay, well, we can do this and we can do this. So A plus A, A equals B and B equals C, um, so A must equal C, right? I mean, that's the formula. They're all the same, so the first one and the last one must also be the same. Um, and, and 
So the response was here, well, this is the model we're going to put up because it seems to be, by the analogy I just made, the A equals B and B equals C, so A equals C. It might even be bigger than that. It might be A equals B, B equals C, C equals D, so A equals D. You see, the the further between A and whatever the, upper, the last letter of that, you know, equality chart ends up being, it could be Z. The further away it gets, the, the less likely that people are going to believe that A and say Z are really equal. Because you got all these other equal signs to, to, to look at and pay attention to between A and Z. So in California, I think the, the longest it's gone to, to, is A equals B, B equals C, C equals D. So A must equal D. And that's how they put together, that was how they assembled the response of how do we provide for people outside of growing for themselves, outside of a caregiver type relationship or a collective. Well, that's it. That's the collective. See, California's got the collective model for medical marijuana. And since we can have a collective, uh, then we've, we've got to be able to provide for medical patients. And I like that model, by the way. I like that model a lot. It works a lot better for me than Michigan's model, which says you've got to have a patient caregiver um, or grow for yourself. Those are the only two options you've got in Michigan. And the law has said that there is no option for A equals D because there were no equal signs between A, B, C, and D here. So if you want to put up the dispensary D, um, the law being allowing, you know, A for allowance, <laughs> D for dispensary, allowance of dispensary, uh, the court says is not A and D, right? Uh, is, 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 is not the truth that there is no allowance for the dispensary because there's no equal signs between A, B, C, and D. You have to have the equal signs to call A, D. So allowance, dispensary being the same, that doesn't happen here in Michigan. Allowance is only through B or C, but you can't get to D because it, it's, there's no equal sign there between C and D. And B and C being grow it for yourself, have a caregiver grow it for you. Those are the only other two options that our law in Michigan allows us. Now, hold on to that note for a second because I'm going to draw back to this and I might have to wait until after the break to do it. But I want to draw back to this point because, you know what, I can't even do it. I'm just going to do it now because I'll forget the point. I'll look like a complete idiot because I will not be able to remember the point. I might even do it now. Um... There, is, there, there are some cases going forward in Michigan. Part of, part of in Michigan, and I'm putting the whole other conversation on pause for a second, the uh, California and the Vermont news stories, because I want to uh, kind of point out this difference between the, this, the Michigan model, because it's one of the other major models. Um, the only other major model being uh, the big industry model, where, hey, we got a big state grower, several licensed large grows they're the only ones that are allowed to grow and the the only way that you can buy it is through the dispensary which has to buy it from them and so there are some models like that that's the other big model there are some other differences in some other places but they're 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 not far off the path though they 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 all represent or resemble one of these forms of allowing for what we call safe access and we'll talk about what unsafe access is later, probably another day. So Michigan has, has two things. There's two things in, in, in the protection law here in Michigan with regards to medical marijuana. So what would have been nice, what would have been important, what would have been smart is if we crafted the law, we said, no, 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 no. For patients who are in possession of a plastic card issued by the state, doesn't matter how you got it, as long as it's in your possession and your name is on it. Um. That, that the laws for marijuana are different. That's what they should have done. That there is no criminal penalty for those in possession of those cards. That's the only way we could have done this and kept it from being what it is now. Um, unfortunately, what they did was they said, okay, we're going to do like the policeman's badge version of immunity. So the policeman has a badge and he's immune from any activity that he's doing while he's wearing that badge, so long as he's, he's acting in a lawful way and in a way that doesn't violate departmental policy. The minute you start wavering away from departmental policy and away from the law, now he's acting outside the bounds of his authority, and now he loses the protection of immunity. 
and this is why you're able to sue a cop who shot somebody um, and killed them uh, through a excessive use of force. I think you're likely to see some of these cases happen this uh, this year in a court. Um, like the guy in um, the, the guy that was running away. Was it in Ohio or was it the guy that was running away from the cops? Uh, he had a traffic encounter and he ran away. And um, I mean, the guy had to have been thirty yards away from him. And the cop, pulled, you know, who's already got his weapon unholstered. This is an unarmed guy, and he knows he's unarmed. He just encountered him in a physical way. He claims he was trying to gla- grab his gun way back when they were physically struggling. But he, the guy, runs away. He's like thirty yards away, and the cop commands him to stop, and he just shoots him down and keeps firing. I mean, that's just clear excessive. I could look at that video and tell you without looking at anything else that this cop used excessive force that ended up in somebody's death. And so at the end of the day with that particular guy, I think you're going to see if they, if, they, if they actually indict him because, you know, somebody's got to do an indictment on a murder. And if the prosecutor ain't doing it, it's going to be a grand jury. And if the grand jury is being instructed by the prosecutor, guess what you're going to end up with? No indictment. Because it's really the grand jury doesn't get doesn't get all the facts. They just get what the prosecutor gives them. And they're not required to give them all the facts. They're just they're just beholden to the prosecutor. And the prosecutor can give them whatever he wants. So they may end up with no indictment here. But then there'll be some backlash, and I think they're not going to let that happen. So the prosecutor may be pressured by you know bosses to present enough information to get the officer indicted, and then let a jury make it up their mind a decision on this. Um, but. My example is this. Let's say that this guy is indicted and uh, the cop is found guilty of some level of crime, whether it was, you know, first degree murder or second degree murder, felony murder, whatever they want to, whatever the lesser included charge might be, manslaughter. Lesser included charge means like manslaughter is a lesser included charge of murder. So you don't have to charge manslaughter. Manslaughter is already assumed in the charge of murder. It's just a lesser included charge. Under, this, under the title, under the umbrella of murder. So he gets convicted of something under that umbrella, whether it was murder or whatever degree below that. And now you set the stage for a civil suit. Because right, he's already been determined that he did something outside the bounds of his badge. So now you're able to overcome his immunity because he was wearing a badge at the time and normally he would be immune from prosecution. Because he was doing something in a lawful way. But because a jury's already determined that he murdered this man, or maybe in the smallest version of that, committed manslaughter against this man by abusing his authority and by um, using excessive force that ended up in death. That, um, so now you've got access to sue the cop. Here And it's only because he stepped out. His immunity didn't apply anymore, right? His immunity only applies if he's acting lawfully and acting within the department's guidelines. Um, so you look at this um, from, from uh, another standpoint. And I guess we'll have to come back after the break to do this. I've stretched this out too long, way too long, I think. Because um, we're going to get back to this original story. Um, in Michigan, you only get the limited protection if you're, as long as you're acting within the bounds of your medical marijuana card. And we'll finish up that idea when we come back after the break, which is happening right now. You're getting the full milk. What's up with these things, Victor? We decided to give ourselves stickers for each feature we release. We read about 10,000 suggestions a week to create features that, as traders, we'd want to use. 10,000 suggestions? Who reads all of those? He does. For all the confidence you need, TD Ameritrade, you got this. At Book Club, they were asking me what you're doing now, Janice. Blogging. Your blog is just pictures of you in a mirror. It's called a fashion blog, Todd. Well, I've been helping people save money with progressives discounts. Flo, can you get Janice a job? <laughs> you should have stuck to softball. I was so much better at softball than Janice did. Where's your wife, Todd? Vacation. Discounts like homeowners, multi-policy. I got a discount on this ham. I've got the meat sweats. As good ham, Diane. Paperless discounts. Give it a rest, Flo. Yeah, Flo, yeah, give, give it a give rest. It a rest. Flo. We asked people to tell us something that happened in their past and something that might happen in their future. The good things were put on yellow magnets and the bad ones on blue. 
The results show the past was a pretty even mix of good and bad, yet the future was almost all good things. Now that you've seen the results of this experiment, what does it mean to you? We all want to think about positive stuff. Realistically, there will be downtimes. It's great to think optimistically, but let's plan for whatever the future might bring. Prudential, bring your challenges. If you're like us, your pets aren't just animals. They're members of your family. Pet Pain CBD Hemp Oil Drops are great for aging as well as active dogs and cats. Some people are apprehensive about hemp treatments for pets. They ask us, what are you smoking? Absolutely nothing, and neither will your pet. Like other hemp-based products for humans, the allure is all of the benefits of cannabis without any of the high. The CBD oil has shown to rejuvenate the bones, joints, brain, stomach, eyes, and heart. And the drops contain absolutely no corn, wheat, soy, artificial colors and flavors, or preservatives. Pick some up today. Visit PetPain.com or ask for Pet Pain at your local pet store. PetPain.com. CBD relief for your pets. It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. All right, so we're talking about... Um the limited immunity of a policeman, and also the limited immunity afforded by a model of um, medical marijuana, which in this case happens to be in Michigan. And there may be some other models that are similar to this around the country. I haven't examined other policies for how close they are to Michigan, but this is one of the other big models. So as in Michigan, you're protected against arrest and prosecution, but only if you're in possession of that card. And it's got to be in your physical possession, the courts have determined. It can't be just like something that's in your house if you're trying to assert uh, 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 your right to not be arrested or prosecuted under this law, under this limited immunity. And you're in a vehicle and you're out driving around and you got some cannabis on you that's your medical stash. And um, so you get you, you know, you get, get encountered by a, a law enforcement agent and uh, they discover this is on you. You can't use the courts have said your card as protection for against arrest and prosecution, even though you can articulate to the policeman maybe the numbers on that card and so they can look at the look card up and see that it is indeed your card and is active and in force and is equal to your ID. Even if you can establish all that, the cops just get, got the right to arrest you because you're not in possession, physical possession of that card. It's not within your reach. So, um, however... Uh, so let's say you got your card, and uh, they they encounter you. But you've got instead of you've got three ounces of marijuana. You're just a patient, and you're only allowed to have two and a half as a patient. But you got three, so now your 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 ability to keep yourself from being arrested or prosecuted under this circumstance by presentation of that card doesn't apply anymore because you've got more than you're allowed to have under the card's entitlement by law. And so you, they can still arrest you and prosecute you as if there was no immunity at all. Um, however, it's been determined recently by the Supreme Court after much mulling and kicking around these cases through the system of juris, jurisprudence for some time, some time now. It's been um, years and years. And one finally settles out to the Supreme Court. Somebody actually had the wherewithal to take the case all the way to the Supreme Court and and won. And what the Supreme Court did, well, there was a partial win. There was a you know win and loss. There was some part that they won about and there was some part they lost about. The part that they won about in this case was, I think it's Hartwick Tuttle. I think Hartwick Tuttle. I'm not sure. I'd have to look it up. I'm sure I could get David Rodoy or uh, you know, one of the fine attorneys here in the state of Michigan on to talk about this. And they would be able to rattle it off right away. I think it is Hartwick Tuttle or one of the two let's just assume that it is because it doesn't matter. The, the Supreme Court said in this instance, they, they've outlined a pathway so that you can use a Section 8 defense. And what that is, is you say, hey, um, I'm, I am, you know, it's affirmative defense. I'm guilty of what you said that I've done. However, I have an explanation and it fits within the bounds of the law where I still have an immunity from, you know, I can ask you to, to, to uh, as a trier of fact, either the judge or the jury, to uh, kick this case out simply because I have a reasonable explanation under the medical law. 
So I'm asserting an asser a affirmative defense. I'm guilty, but I have permission. Um, and so before in Michigan, what the, how they viewed this was, if you lose any little part of protection under Section 8, but your section or under Section 4, the part about the card being in your possession and having less than two and a half ounces or you know, uh, and less than 12 plants, that kind of thing, closed lock facility, all that crap. If you violated any of the you know, tenets of that provision, the Section 4 provisioning, that your Section 8 provisioning went away. So it was like a bubble, right? If you, if you pop the bubble, the entire bubble goes away. You, you just one little hole in the bubble and the whole thing disappears. That's how they treated it before as police and prosecutors. But the Supreme Court said, no, 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 you can't do it that way. That's, that, you cannot do it that way. Yeah, the reason there's a Section 4 and there's a Section 8 because they stand separate. And it, 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 the whole reason that Section 8 stands in the first place is so that if you have a problem with Section 4 where you, you can be arrested and prosecuted, you still have an affirmative defense in front of the trier of fact, which says, you, you, you know, again, I'm guilty, but I have permission. I have a reason under the law that allows me to say uh, I, don't, I don't deserve to be punished on this and you kind of have to follow suit with that. You can't punish me because I've asserted my affirmative defense. Now, um, most people up until recently have never gotten that far. Nobody's ever been able to talk to a judge or a jury in the trial itself and, and, and raise their affirmative defense because they always said, hey, you already lost your Section 4 protection. You don't get a medical marijuana defense. You can't even say that you're, a, that you're sick. We don't want to indicate to the jury that you might be a medical marijuana patient at all. You can't mention it. You can't tell them you have a card. You can't testify to any of these facts. And they're all facts. Uh, the Supreme Court said you can't do that in Michigan. Um, that it, it, it doesn't matter. Because for any marijuana crime, you could have had two tons of weed. And as long as you can re reasonably explain why the possession of that two tons was helping a medical patient, either yourself, you, you explain it away. Tell us, how, tell us why you needed two and a half tons. And as long as you can, and I don't think that anybody could to explain away two and a half tons, but you might be able to explain away several pounds, right? You got patients, you're making a concentrate out of this because uh, the, the patients that you're serving, including yourself, need the concentrate in lieu of standard uh, cannabis. They needed a stronger form in order to make it work, in order to be effective for them. Um, so what I'm saying is recently because of the Supreme Court decision, there have been some challenges along this Section 8 defense issue. And, and, and um, there are cases pending uh, that are still trying to get, get into this Section 8 room. And, and because the Supreme Court has outlined a clear pathway to presenting a Section 8 defense, people are now starting to do it. And, and um, now, why did I tell you all that? i got to remember now because I almost forgot. Um, oh, it had to do with this, uh, th this example of the policeman and his immunity. Um, because you're, you have a limited immunity. It's, a, it's one of these methods by which, you know, all of the, you know, drug laws saying that you're a terrible, awful human being and criminal, um, you know, a, a high, high order criminal for possessing or using cannabis, um, or growing, especially if you're growing it. And we're going to throw the book at you. And if they were able to weasel away your limited immunity through Section 4 and tell you that your Section 8 defense goes away because you lost your Section 4, which really wasn't the case, um, and they would use this to pressure people into plead, you know, pleading guilty to a lesser charge. And, you know, most of these cases are never tried anyways because they get to the point where they say you can't present a medical defense, and then they all of a sudden they plead out. And the prosecutor's never required to call witnesses or do any of the tasks of having the burden of proving his case. And so I say that all those patients should be standing up and, and, and uniting and saying, look, none of us are going to plead guilty. And this will force the hands of prosecutors to try all of them, regardless of the scare tactic. And that'll clog up the system. But anyways, we're getting off point. Now, the point was with California and, um, and their model, uh, in days past, I'm sure they presented many different forms. In fact, I could articulate some of them, but I won't. We don't have time. Uh, but these have all failed, and it's all because the, the cannabis community splintered into protectionism. 
hey, I need to protect my dispensary angle, or I need to protect my growing angle, or I need to protect my transfer angle, or my transportation angle, or whatever it is. And because of that, you know, if the if the bill didn't lean your way, you might say, well, I can't be supportive of that bill. And so this is how the group got splintered, and that's that tie-dye t-shirt I was comparing the state of California to. This is why their campaigns, um, you know, going against common sense uh, have all failed between here and there. So here's the new version of legal cannabis here in the state of uh, California. Um, Campaign organizers have formed a political action committee called Californians to Control, Regulate, and Tax Adult Use of Marijuana while protecting children, which uh, says it's collected $1.25 million, thrown in another 250000 from, you know, a, a couple of other groups um, for a total of half a million, and another 250000 uh, from another pack, and another uh, 250000 So they got like... Um, you know, a whole bunch of money at this. I wish we had that kind of money in Michigan because uh, we're working with nothing here. I mean, we're doing it all ourselves, grassroots. You, you know, my 50 bucks and your 100 bucks and that guy's 20 bucks and five bucks here and three bucks there. I mean, we patched this together like a quilt. Alan and some growers are concerned uh, the uh, AMA with favor corporate interests over the small farmers who currently dominate the industry in the state, while other stakeholders worry that the measure doesn't go far enough to decriminalize marijuana. Uh, The Parker Initiative does not respect the provisions that were developed in the legislature that protect a fair marketplace, said Allen. He's referring to the framework uh, created by state lawmakers last year to regulate medical marijuana's market, which had functioned largely without oversight for nearly 20 years. Allen said his group was concerned uh, there were not enough limitations against vertical integration or allowing businesses to take part in multiple aspects of cultivation, distribution, and retail sales at once. For that reason, he says, his organization is remaining officially neutral on the proposal despite pressure to fall into line, although he said uh, he would continue to talk to Alma organizers. Uh, Dale Sky Jones, the chair of Coalition for Cannabis Policy Reform and its offshoot, Reform California, said her organization was taking a similar position. Reform California had previously cleared its own legalization ballot measure last year, but voted in December to hold off gathering signatures based on the momentum behind the Parker proposal and to avoid mutual destruction with competing measures, she said. You see, these are all things you've got to take into account, and this is why California's always failed in the past. The splintering. Despite that, Jones said she still has concerns that Alma does not go far enough with legalization, does not adequately address social justice issues, Etc., etc. It's not true legalization. It's just softer prohibition. You see, that's the problem. Um, softer prohibition. And, and the people here at Abrogate, Michigan, who you know, want to grow marijuana like tomatoes, um, hey, if, you, if your six year old kid wants to grow some weed, let him do it. I mean, that's their position. Um, same problem that we got here. Um, the, the, those guys don't want to support Am I Legalized because they, don't, they think it also doesn't go far enough. California's legalization efforts have long been plagued by dissenting opinions and lack of unity. Divisions that contributed to a 2010 failed attempt at legalizations. Reform California was one of the largest efforts to create some cohesion for stakeholders. But Kitty said that AMA has also done everything we can to build the broadest consensus possible. So this is what people are fighting with. I mean, this goes on. Uh, We'll come back and we'll look at how Vermont wants to do this and if they've taken into account anything from California after the break. You're getting the full melt. Promotional consideration provided by nosmell.com, pioneering the storage market for cannabis users. The nosmell patented bag technology offers users 100% smell-proof detection from even the most sophisticated of noses. nosmell.com, so nobody knows. When placing your order for a no smell bag, make sure to use discount code Full Melt and take 10% off the entire order. Learn more about no smell technology at nosmell.com. Young students are our future. They're eager to learn, eager to succeed, eager to make the world a better place. And they want to make it to school safely. Share the road, take care when passing and always leave three feet between you and people on bikes. Bikes are legal road vehicles. We're all drivers. 
When you need legal help, you don't want to guess at who's standing next to you in court. And when it comes to a medical marijuana defense, it's even smarter to partner with a lawyer before you need one. Based in Royal Oak, David Rudoy has a proven history of not being afraid to take your case all the way to the Supreme Court and win. Find the law offices of Rudoy Law at RudoyLaw.com. RudoyLaw.com is a quick reference on your rights concerning Michigan medical marijuana and up-to-date news. That's R-U-D-O-I Law.com. Call 248-935-9074 now and talk about your legal needs because at RudoyLaw.com, we don't just stand up for you. We stand up with you. If you're like us, your pets aren't just animals. They're members of your family. Pet Pain CBD Hemp Oil Drops are great for aging as well as active dogs and cats. Some people are apprehensive about hemp treatments for pets. They ask us, what are you smoking? (laughs) Absolutely nothing, and neither will your pet. Like other hemp-based products for humans, The allure is all of the benefits of cannabis without any of the high. The CBD oil has shown to rejuvenate the bones, joints, brain, stomach, eyes, and heart. And the drops contain absolutely no corn, wheat, soy, artificial colors and flavors, or preservatives. Pick some up today. Visit PetPain.com or ask for PetPain at your local pet store. PetPain.com. CBD relief for your pets. Hey, it's Steve Green for the Sweet Leaf in Flint because now getting safe access to medical cannabis patients in Flint, Michigan is never more welcoming. Presenting the Sweet Leaf, a brand new patient experience bringing 12 carefully selected caregivers housed in nine separate offices to distinctly assist you with their knowledge and reputation for excellent patient care. Classes and training coming soon in the large community room. Check it out in person, 400 South Door Highway or call 810-259-2571. The Sweet Leaf Center in Flint, 810 810- 259-2571. It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. I swear to God, I must be getting a kidney stone or something. I got severe uh, lower back pain on one side, right above my hip, towards my spine. That's that's kidney to me. Started yesterday. I'm afraid I have to have the doctor look at that now. Good Lord, I'm falling apart as a human being. What are you going to do? So, uh... Sometimes quite as violent. Uh, just to kind of wrap up this California thing, uh, the changes that they were making in trying to amend the, the plan based on concerns raised after the initial proposal... Um, was to hope that uh, they can get some some cohesion here, so get people together, um, help gain the backing of some groups that were undecided, including the NAACP. Alice Huffman, president of the California NAACP and a member of uh, Reform California, says she had issues that I wanted taken care of concerning the African-American community. And, and why wouldn't they? An earlier version of the Parker plan included restrictions on licenses in neighborhoods with high crime rates and did not put tax dollars directly into the hands of community organizations, both areas that she felt negatively impacted African-American and minority communities. And so it's things like it's this kind of splintering that pre- prevents people from getting stuff done. And, and so all I'm, the whole, I guess, purpose and point of this entire show and, and, and this line of thinking with these news stories is to hopefully plant a seed in the heads of people that are facing this in states where this is still a question mark and and ongoing and underway in changing. If you don't take into account the mistakes that California made and is continuing to apparently make in trying to get this kind of stuff done, you're going to end up with the, in the same hands, in the same boat, with the same results. You splintered and nobody came and voted for one particular measure when it got on the ballot because nobody could agree upon it. Uh, Jones added that lukewarm reception from stakeholders like her uh, may leave the AMA campaign to depend less on volunteers and more on paid media to get its message out. You see, there's a whole synergy that goes with this that you lose if you can't get everybody on board, and that's what a coalition is. You've got to build a coalition, and if you if you splinter the group into co- in, you know the coalition d- dissolves into its components. There's not a, there's no coalition at all, and you're never going to get this done without that coalition. Every successful cannabis campaign has always come with coalition. Every single one. Vermont's governor wants to legalize marijuana. And this is what the legislature, this, you know, from the governor down down to the legislature, this is a different approach. This is not some people's initiative being passed around uh, 
you know, the ballot petition. Uh, Vermont's governor wants to do this in the following way. Uh, and, and, and I have problems with a lot of this, and I hope I can get this out in the short time we got left in the program. Um, in 2015, Vermont lawmakers commissioned a 218-page report on legalization options from the drug policy experts at the RAND Corporation. So they're going into the process perhaps better informed than the average lawmakers would be. Looming quietly in the background of Vermont's legalization discussion is Bernie Sanders. The senator from Vermont and the 2016 Democratic presidential candidate has officially called for removing pot from the federal list of controlled substances, essentially ending marijuana prohibition at the federal level. On the campaign trail, he's been the most outspoken advocate for changing drug laws, so having a strong national voice in support of legalization may provide some political cover for Vermont lawmakers working to legalize back home. We have a history of tackling difficult issues with respect and care the Vermont way. Uh, Shumlin said Thursday, I believe, that we have the capacity to take this next step and get marijuana legalization done right. And that's it. I mean, they really didn't talk anything at all about how they were going to do it, did they? I mean, they didn't. But if they're going to do this, I mean, this Washington Post story is really, uh, you know, I, I suppose... So here's here's the plan. Five key requirements of any legalization regime saying such a system should, quote, have protections in place to keep adolescents from buying. Number two, feature taxes modest enough to keep prices low and hence put black market sellers out of business. Number three, provide tax revenue to expand addiction prevention programs. Uh, Number four, strengthen existing DUI laws. And number five, and finally, Uh, ban the sale of edible marijuana products that have proven vexing in Colorado and elsewhere, at least until the state can figure out how to regulate them properly. And and I suppose if uh, they want to consider themselves more educated than the rest because they had the Rand Corporation study going into this to decide, uh, hey, where's the middle line here and how can we just cut right to the chase and and just follow the middle line and and get this done legislatively? Um, That... uh, some of these issues, I, I believe, like this uh, issue about the banning the sale of edible products, uh, this issue has uh, been a stumbling block in a number of places, and it's all been handled by different organizations or different, you know, policymakers in different places differently. Um, you know, these what they what they're trying to say here about this. I only have a couple of minutes left, tops. About you know. The black market. These illegal dealers couldn't care less how young their customers are or what's, what, what's in the product they sell or what illegal drugs you buy from their stash, much less whether they pay taxes on their earnings. So in other words, he's saying it might not be just marijuana that a dealer could have. It might have other drugs. So that's a gateway right there, isn't it? Um, and then, um, you know, because you never had access to the drugs before. Now you're going to buy your, your weed from the illegal dealer and all of a sudden he's got, I don't know, roofies. <laughs> they still have roofies. Um, they certainly have uh, ecstasy. Um, you know, an ecstasy could be dangerous if it's, uh, you know, not used properly or not used with care. Dehydrate you, cause some heart problems. Um, that's what they're saying. And they don't care about how old your kids are. Uh, but these illegal dealers, um, you know, are what's on the, on the forefront of their mind. Part of this is keeping that illegal money in the state, right? If if it's if if you're if you're handing your money to a, a weed dealer, and he had to buy it from some you know middleman, and the middleman got it from some guy that brought it into the country, and uh, the guy that brought it into the country got it from a guy that got it across the border. Um, eventually, that money is going to follow its same pathway back from whence it came, right? The product still is an imported product from Mexico in this instance, in this example, and still will have the same pathway back to the owner of said sold product in way of payment of cash. So the ca- the money, the drugs come in, they make their way through the system, the cash gets paid, it all makes its way back the other direction. And so part of this that, that will... Re- and this is what's great about, you know, doing away with prohibition in the first place is because you get to enjoy all of that capital not leaving your community. You know, how many, t- how many guys' paychecks, how many girls' paychecks have to be debited by... 80, 100 bucks for a quarter of weed for the month or for the week, whatever your stash requirement is. How many, how many of those $100 bills do you have to add up 
every single week before you start realizing a hit in your economy, your local economy. That money doesn't go. You can't buy fast food with that money anymore. You can't go into the Walmart and buy any goods or products or services. You can't go into the Lowe's or the Home Depot or any place else. You can't go spend it at a nice restaurant. You're not getting new wardrobe. None of that's going to apply. Um, when you do away with the black market by legalizing it, all that money stays. Taxes get generated. The government does well. The community does well. And that's just from the money no longer leaving. Because you kept it here now. Um, that's a tremendous... And then you're not spending a bunch of money trying to lock up and jail people in the system. Because that's all burdened heavy on taxation. It's, it's grinding American citizens through the system, no matter who's paying for it, somebody's paying for it. And it's exorbitant and unnecessary. Um, so you're saving all that money. You're saving all that police money. I mean, there's a ton of reasons, uh, financial reasons only, uh, aside from the social health issues um, and, and, and the slippery slope into other drug issues because the dealer might have all kinds of other drugs that are much more dangerous than cannabis. I mean, that's the truth of the matter. So as we look forward to 2016, if you're in one of these states like Vermont that's trying to do this, look at the example of California. If, if, you're, if Vermont's doing this with, a, with legislation, if you're in one of the states that's trying to do this with a petition drive, pay particular attention to finding ways to group together and stand on common ground so that at the end of the day you have the coalition necessary to get voters to the ballot box and actually get those signatures on board. The Full Melt Show is a production of TFM Media.